Hello and welcome to a new series here on the channel where we will be doing what I once thought impossible. We are returning to Alentir. Though not in the north as we did last time, this time we are in southern Alentir, playing as the nation of Emion, which is uh, quite the interesting tag to say the least. We even start off with a little bit of lore here. Uh, but yes, this is a new series that I'm very excited to get into. This is a pretty new mission tree. came out in the most recent update, so it's it's very, very good. It's very, very good from what I hear, and I'm very excited to jump into things. Uh, now let's go ahead and read this little bit of lore, and then we can look at our national ideas and such. So, contemplation upon Vusam. Many of my men now rest back home, but I sail back across the sea to plan their next steps when they rejoin me. I remember my first voyage across these waters, seeking the city of Nanru Nakar, from which the region's magical trinkets originated. After the hostility of the local warlords forced me to turn back, I learned my fate in Koromentarin. It would bring an Emioni rule to these lands, replacing the war-torn fields with bountiful farms, and setting the stage for those after me to bring prosperity to their people. More interestingly, I learned the exact age and cause of my death, indicating I would survive all else thrown at me. Both of these have proven true thus far, but my work continues. I'm in a race against a calendar to establish my city's rule before my passing. And while I may never lay eyes on the car myself, I must ensure my descendants do. The foothold is only the beginning. Nobility estate gains 15 loyalty. We lose 30 Republican tradition. Uh, we get the Les Caris Destiny until 1461, which is minus 20% fort maintenance, plus 10% nobility loyalty imp influence, and the increased levies privilege cannot be revoked while his water fire lasts. And Les Caris is expected to die at the age of 61, but no sooner. Now, Les Caris is our leader. Kylakis Les Caris the Conqueror. A 3-4-5 they are a lawgiver, inspiring leader, and conqueror. They are very, very good. Uh, I guess he's he's been compared to like Alexander the Great type stuff. So what our goal is, I think, is to take all of this region, which is not as easy as it may look, because Larenkar here is absolutely a threat. I don't know if they still start off as a great power. They do. They're number six great power at the start, with lots of development and lots of vassals, and they are absolutely going to be the uh, big problem for us. They start off with a six six six. Who is a conqueror, strict, and malevolent. Though he's age 93, I don't know if he's going to like instantly die or, or what's going to go on there. But he is definitely a threat. Uh, let's go over our national ideas real quick. We have one colonist in 10% infantry combat ability. We have minus 20% province war score cost, plus 20% improved relations, plus 10% national tax, plus 20% manpower in true faith provinces. We have plus two maximum cultures, plus 10% domestic trade power, and minus 15% fort maintenance. Finally, minus two national unrest. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. We are the Kaonism religion, which gives us plus 10% trade efficiency and 0.25 yearly Republican tradition. Less of a religion and more of a philosophy, the core tenets of Kaonism center around the power of the city-state as the basis of all civilizations. Uh, right now, we have the Exeriophonic Mandate, which is minus 20% military advisor cost. Exerophon of Lokimion's teachings note that the foremost role of a Keon's government is to serve the people, and that a people are best served by being made secure. Security is necessary for a people's rights to be guaranteed, and security from threats internal and external can only be maintained with a strong military and a monopoly on force that can be deployed to crush internal rebellion and dissuade foreign enemies from attacks. Sometimes derided as a philosophy of might makes right, exeriophonic governmental policy places military affairs at the front and center of the Kaon's decision-making in order to protect its people. If our crown land rises about 33%, the current modifier will be replaced with minus 10% military tech cost, which is rather nice. Now, it does take us to our estates here. I kind of just want to stack crown land. Not going to lie to you, I think that might be a pretty good play. I mean, I do want to sell titles, but when we take tech four, we should probably have a positive in our crown land here. Now, how long would it be until I get that? Uh, let's see. When do I take tech? Being 1450 at the moment. Hmm. Let's start with the seas land. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and give the missionary maintenance cost. We're going to give oversight by the philosophers. Uh, I don't know if we need to enforce... Yeah, you know what? We'll go and force unity of faith here. We'll make sure that we convert everything. Uh, nobility. I don't want to make them too strong. So we'll give them supremacy over the council. And then we'll just kind of leave them alone. The merchant guilds. You can have colonial charters. You can have free enterprise. And I don't really need to give you trade fleets, I don't think. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, adventures. We could give you generous quest rewards. I think I will. Just to make sure that our adventurers are super loyal here. 
Yeah, I don't really want to give out any of this. Depending on the loyalty of mages, I can get them to a consistent 50, but it's not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and summon the diet. You want me to convert something? And then you will give me a level 1 Inquisitor. It's cheaper. I mean... No. Because I can't convert that. So, uh, no. <laughs> to, to put it simply, that will not happen. We're going to convert something else. But I will do this development mission. That is fine. Uh, we do need to choose a native policy. We're actually going to go for native coexistence here. Because we want colonies, but I can't actually afford these colonies. We need to get, like, gold or... Uh, something. We need something to, to boost our economy. And the closest gold is, I mean, technically here, but it's here. Uh, I believe we need to vassalize all of these guys and then expand into here. I believe is what we're supposed to do. Now, we are uh, Ruinborn. So, Ruinborn administration is plus 20% domestic trade power, minus 20% improved relations, minus 10% institution spread, but plus 5 admin efficiency. And our military is minus 10% morale of navies, minus 10% national sailors, minus 30% land attrition, but plus 10% shock damage. So Ruinborn are essentially elves that were, what's the best way to put it? Like, magically radiated to not live forever and be weaker. That's what happened. So when Alien Tear went boom, the Ruinborn also kind of went boom. Uh, and these are just people that were left over. Now, most of the... Uh, people like our culture group are over here in these cities and they're actually in cities and they have like cool uh like shields that protect their cities because this right here is actually like a nuclear wasteland and there are storms that come off of this and blow across this part of the continent and will absolutely roll you if your troops are out here so they hide in their cities which is pretty cool all right let's go ahead and get our troops over here now our mission tree is interesting we get extra bonuses on some of these missions, if Lescaris is still alive. So we want to do as many of these missions as possible before 14, uh, was 61-ish is when some of these bonuses uh, go away. Like, look, we can get manpower cover speed and stability. Now, the problem with that is we need to take a lot of land over here. So we're going to see how these alliances turn out. But if we can get four provinces that we can have a claim on, then we can get claims on pretty much the whole area. And existing claims in the areas will become permanent, which makes them cheaper to core as well, which is pretty sweet. Uh, all right, we do start off with a vassal, an autonomous vassal here in Koramutran. I think you're pretty loyal. Yeah, you're pretty loyal for the most part. And I don't think we can Royal Mary because we are a republic. Now, let's look at our government reform. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we are the Conqueror's Council, which gives plus five discipline. Minus 0.75 yearly Republican tradition, minus 20% core creation costs, and plus 30 max absolutism. So we are very, very, very conquest focused here in the early game. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to let these alliances kind of uh, work themselves out. And then we will choose our rivals and who we are going to attack first. You seem like a pretty good target. You seem like a great target. Can I rival you? No. Oh, I only have one rival, so this will do that. We should get another option here because someone else rivaled us. Yeah, Tursen will do that. So you are definitely looking like the best person to attack here. Who is Larnkar like? Okay, we're not too worried about them. So let's go ahead and get claims on you. And I'm assuming that you two are allied. No, you're allied to him. You have no allies. Oh, yeah, you do. Oh, you're allied to this guy. Hmm, don't know if I really want to fight you there. This is a much easier fight for me to take. So we're going to need a claim on you as well. We need to get a lot of claims. Uh, now, I do want to make sure that we are not wasting manpower here in the beginning. Because we do actually need to make sure that we are doing this intelligently. Because, again, a lot of our mission tree is kind of time-gated around our current leader being alive. He is a general, by the way. He's a 3643. So he's a rather sweet general. Rather sweet general. Uh, someone wants us to support their independence. No, thank you. Because I know exactly who you want me to support your independence from, and I have no interest in fighting Larnkar. All right, if I have money and I own Kenkotrund here, then I get some global settler increase at the cost of money, diplo power, and manpower. But it actually pays for our colonist. So let's do that. Go ahead and send our colonists out. 
Uh, we are going to need to actually sell titles here. I, I don't like that, but we need to do it. All right, state for the city. As we expand eastward and deliver stability to the war-torn peninsula of Taekend, we must also to continue to strengthen our power base closer to home. The Basso Bar near us control plenty of fields ripe for farming, forests teeming with lumber, and hills waiting patiently for their ores to be uncovered. We must send forward our own settlers and claim these lands in the name of Amion. All right, so we gain plus 12 yearly tax income and 20 global seller increase. That pays for our colonists. It's pretty good. Pretty good. And wait for the month tick, and then we'll move these guys over. Uh, we could probably go for speed five now. Yeah, people really, really, really want me to tell them out. I don't know if drilling these troops, if drilling my leader, is going to uh, kill him. I know that it says that it won't, he won't die, but I'm being honest with you, I don't trust that enough at all. I don't trust that at all. So we're gonna hire another general here just for drilling purposes. You know, we could also save money, but I'm gonna drill. I'm gonna drill. It's what we do. It's what we do. We'll get money through conquest. It's fine. It's fine. Because we need to get our claims, and then we're gonna pop off, and we're gonna annex a whole bunch of stuff. Whole bunch of stuff. Man, we really are struggling for money, though. Not a joke. Not a joke. Alright, let's get one claim here. Let me guess, Lauren Carr? No. Who are you? Who are you? Why am I allowed to rival you? Are you over here somewhere? Oh, you're all the way over here. Yeah, no, I'm good. Thank you, though. All right, uh, pull this back. And let's go ahead and throw down an embargo. And we'll embargo you as well. So we'll probably save our prestige for actual fights. Generation of cowards, I mean, that's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and build a spy network here. And I want to get a claim on each of them. That way I can go to war faster with my claims. There we go. I guess I could go to war now and then wait until... Well, I need my manpower to be at 75% anyways. Oh. I see the problem. I see the problem. I'm not going to have 75% of my manpower because of that mission. So I might have done that a little too early. I mean, that's okay. We can make that work. Just a little unfortunate. I'll make sure we're building a spy network here, please. Get that going. Just get some army drill. It's not the end of the world. Bribes are growing more accepted. I mean, that's unfortunate. For sure. But we'll just drill. We'll just drill and chill and uh, do well. Now, our other missions, we need to develop our capital a bit. We need to do that. We need to do that. Yeah, okay. Nothing crazy. You want me to develop this? I mean, yeah. I could do that. We'll put a couple points of uh, Diplo Dev there. Eventually, we're going to want to develop the institution here. So I don't want to develop it too much, but... A little bit extra cash would be nice. Uh, I guess we're going to have to lose that prestige. Ooh, spices. Nice. Okay. It's worth a decent amount of money. All right, get to converting that. Switch off this edict. Put this edict on. Enforce religious unity. Uh, we can go ahead and get a claim on you up here. Amazing. Yeah, probably should not have done that colony mission so early. That's okay, though. Would not be a poem you play through if I didn't do the wrong thing immediately, bro. It's got to be immediately. If not, well, then it's not really me playing, right? It couldn't be. Okay, you've got two allies now. You still have just him. You have just him. So we can go to war here. Take these two provinces and humiliate this guy. For an early humiliate. That seems pretty good to me. Seems pretty good to me. We can just walk in. We can stack wipe him here. Ooh, that's a problem. I didn't realize our novice adventures were so big. Did not realize the novice adventures were so big. Uh, go ahead and go indebted to the merchant guilds. 
We'll get our money back through war. It's fine. We get two more ticks of reinforcement. Let's get our general in charge. Yeah, we have a really good general, so... Should be worth. Apparently we have rebels. Uh, we'll deal with them in time. All right, connect up. And let's go ahead and declare this war. Move in. Okay, they're going to run away. We're going to chase them. These hills. They are alone. They have a two-shock general. We have a six-shock. Goodbye. Thank you for playing. Uh, we're going to tell our vassal, yes, please uh, siege that down. Is he really going to walk all the way back to my capital here? That is super annoying. Uh, but we can probably siege race him here. That is something that we can probably pull off. Run away, little guy. Run away. We will siege you down. That's very unfortunate. <laughs> very unfortunate timing for them to die, though. I will admit. Will admit. Uh, yeah, let's get you all together looting things. And honestly, this is kind of best case scenario that they just walked away. We're not even going to put a defensive edict on there. Uh, an important decision. Uh, as I spend more time amongst the locals of Taikan, I learn more of their folklore. Their so-called gods are figures not too different than myself. Those scant few with the martial prowess to command authority over a large portion of Taikan. However, they claim their gods hold sway over destiny, while destiny in turn holds sway over mortals. As I learn my fate from one of their seers, it may be possible some among them hold the secret to avoiding my planned demise. The thought weighed on me for some time, and I ultimately decided my destiny is to lead a meon, or I shall overcome my destiny. And I shall seek to avoid my predetermined death. Well, knowing what I know about kind of Greek mythology, and that's kind of what this region is based off of is Greek. If we try to overcome our destiny, we're going to get smacked down. It's not going to go well. It's not going to go well. So I think we just accept that we're going to die. Like, I mean, it is what it is. 50 ammo power, one of each monarch point. But also, how interesting would it be to try to avoid our predetermined death? You know what a great way to avoid our predetermined death is, though? Die now. So we're going to be, we're going to play it safe. We're just going to use this guy to conquer a bunch of land. I don't know if that's the correct decision, but it's the decision that we're going to take. We're going to go with the safe bet on this one. Going to go with the safe bet. He's too good to give up. Too good to give up to some random event firing, killing him off. All right, let me build a spy network on you, and let me start improving relations with my vassal a bit. Just to make them more loyal. When feudalism does spawn here, we can complete another mission. Uh, expand the bodyguard. The office of Calacus is challenged by enemies within and without, and thus a strong personal bodyguard is essential to ensure that he remains in power. The turbulent politics of our time require this, but there are those who decry it, claiming that this new trend displays aristocratic tendencies and subverts the traditions of the Republic. So I can gain one stab and ten Republican tradition, or I can just gain Republican tradition. And yeah, I'm just going to gain Republican tradition. I mean, the stab sounds great and all, but... Which sounds better? Probably a tradition. All right, you move in there. You follow in. And we can peace you out for a humiliate, for war reps, and for money. I like all of those things. Thank you very much. All right. Then he can siege that down, and we can go get ready for our next war. In fact, we probably could just declare it. To be honest with you. This is Farmlands. He's about to lock in. Lauren Carr declares on Tier Sin. Uh, yep. Nope. We're definitely going in now. We're definitely going in now. Uh, I kind of want to wait here. How much do I get from a Slacken? I don't know. I can't really afford to go like that. Okay, you need to leave... Uh... Just leave the mercs there for now. Go get the rest of this occupied, so that way Lauren Carr can't. Uh, they do have a war wizard down here. So that is something to keep in mind. Let's tell my vassal to walk over here. Thank you. Get that siege down. Gotta keep an eye on this guy. This guy is surrendered, too. 
I kind of want to get the manpower so I can complete the mission to get the permanent claims. But if I own four provinces, then that also works. That also works. So we'll just take the land and we'll take it like that. That should be two now. I need the manpower. That's what's up. I just need the manpower. I could hire generals, but you know, rather not. Rather not. All right, let's go and get this siege down. Just keep an eye on this guy down here. Oh, there's a bunch of take in zealots. Can I stop them in time? No, I can't. Don't worry about it then. Don't worry about it then. That just means that this conversion is going to fail. It is what it is. Uh, people want access. I'm going to decline for now. I don't actually want them to have access. Okay, there we go. He fought the war wizard for us. So we went and sent 2,000 troops down south to try and get this occupied for ourselves. Not sure where he's going. Who in here? I don't know where he's going. Okay, so Lauren Carr was able to get both of these provinces. Is what it is. He can't. I don't. I mean, he might take it, but I don't think he will. We will take Miltech here. Because again, we want to make sure that Lauren Carr cannot threaten us. We want to make sure Lauren Carr cannot threaten us. Also, did I build a spy network on you? Yeah, that was not who I meant to build a spy network on. Meant to build a spy network on you. Yeah, you're definitely the, the main target here for me. Alright. Uh, fewer rebels than one, and I gain 10 prestige. Sure. We can do that. We can do that. That's not a problem. I would really like to not have to fight these guys. There we go. My vassal will go in there. I'm trying to save some manpower where I can. Uh, you go stand there. You can stand here. Just get ready to take that. Let's go loot while we're waiting. Let's get rid of this bad embargo as well. We're going to rival Larnkar after this war, I would assume, is what's going to happen. Is we will then be a valid rival. Uh, we'll keep paying for our troops, though. I want to make sure that we don't get spooked here. Not spooked. Um, rolled by rebels. There we go. We'll start converting that. 42%. Yep, and our boats are here. Does he have any good boats? No, it's only transports. Uh, we will not take Aventech. Also, I, I know that I'm not coring these. But if we can get permanent or just regular claims on this, it'd make it cheaper and worth waiting for. I just need like an event or something that will give me some professionalism. Professionalism, manpower, something. Something. Alright, this is probably fully looted. Yep, we over here. Just keep going. We get this occupied, and then we'll go attack these guys. Are you out anyone else? No. So I can couple of droids to you as well. And probably should. I have a feeling Lauren Carr is going to want to jump in on that war as well. Which uh, is a little problem for us, because we want that land. Very specifically, we want that land. We want all the land before Lauren Carr takes it. Because remember, all these guys are his vassals. So if we can just Take everything, and then hopefully support his vassals. That'd be great. There is also... Ooh. Glad we got him. Uh, there are also ways to vassalize these guys, but we'll have vassal problems for that. All right, we are going to full... Uh, are we going to full annex here? We probably shouldn't. We probably shouldn't. It'd be a very nice province to own, though. This is an estuary. You know what we'll do? We'll just white piece them. We'll break his alliance with that guy. Do we take money here? Yeah, I just take money. No, we'll just take war reps. Just war reps. War reps and break your alliance. That way it's a short truce and we can come back at him later. And then we'll have permanent claims on this province, which is nice. I can't afford that AE. That AE is going to be too much. All right, move you up here. Let's get ready for this war. I'll never start Lauren Carr. Ooh, you know what we could do, actually? 
a little bit of a big brain play here. A little bit of a big brain play here. Kubla drives you. We can go and get this fully occupied. Then we peace out. Because Lauren Carr right now is stuck in a war against the guy we're at war with. So he can't declare war on anyone else. So even if he wants this land, there's nothing to do about it right now. This is already rightful Poemu clay. Uh, and we can now click a renewed invasion. When Lascaris led us onto the shores of Taken, many resisted us. Uh, Nagar Vechi, Sithanin Ith Vusam, Tursin, and Gofira were all defeated by our forces. While our victory was great, all of these states still stand to fight another day, and it is only a matter of time before they join together again in an attempt to drive us out. We must prepare faster than they can and push our advantage while we still hold it. So a bunch of claims and a bunch of areas. Existing claims will become permanent. The fine benefit applies if Lascaris is still alive. 100 military power. There we go. Now we can go ahead and core that up. Though I don't think we actually got claims up here. Uh, yeah, no, we did. We did. So it should have made them cheaper. I don't know if I need like a month take for that to update. We can we can wait and see. All right, go ahead and give me two troops to send over into there and one troop to send to here. We have two troops there, we'll lock forward. Okay, no, we're, we're good, it updated. I just want to make sure. Uh, we can choose our next government reform. I don't know what happens in our nation. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if it's better to go republicanism here or if it's better to go for maybe like a sortition play, kind of like we did with Sarasung. Uh, meritocratic rule is always good. Political dynasties is, is I mean, the re-election from ruling family is bad. But the random candidate is good. I think we'll go with the safe republicanism choice here. Yeah, but I, I honestly don't know if that is a, a good move or not. But we shall see. We shall see. Can't know everything all the time, right? Sometimes you just got to make a decision and move on. All right. All of you can move into this region. Let's turn this down. He's not going to do anything. There we go. Move you guys down as well. Uh, we could take that. I don't think we will, though. We got 9,000 troops here that we can just kind of sit and look at. We can piece you out now, though. Take all this land. Take a bunch of money. Uh, this will make Lauren Card join the coalition, though. Are we really ready to fight a coalition war this early? I mean, do I have a choice? Because <laughs> it kind of isn't looking like I have a choice. If I actually want to take everything... I don't have a choice. So if I don't have a choice, then I might as well. But that means that we definitely need to hold on to this peace deal. Till the absolute last second. Now I really wish I annexed this guy. Now I really wish I annexed this guy. Because if I'm going to get coalition anyways, then I might as well have just taken everything. Ridiculous. Uh, let's go deal with these rebels first, then we'll come back and deal with these guys. If I can prevent this separatism, that'd be great. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Did not get there in time. Did not get there in time. All right, one guy. Let's move south. We'll take out these. Like by that, it'll be great. It'll be grand. Uh, okay. Well, you don't have any allies. Are we, are we really going to do a coalition war this early? That seems crazy to me. Well, like, they want me to take this stuff. They want me to take this stuff. Make sure we're improving with you. And then what happens after these missions? What do I get to do? We can make this guy into a regular vassal. I mean, that's nice. Uh, also, it's missionary strength. Hmm, okay, I see why. I see. We need to get these... Six own provinces here need to be owned. And then against stability and manpower recovery speed. And preparing the next push is into land we already own. Well, we will probably, hopefully, own. Oh, okay. I've seen how this mission tree works. So it's based off of the manpower that we have. 
Ah, okay, so we need to keep up high manpower. So we need to pick good fights. I'm going to be honest with you. I think we just fight them here. I think we just go for it. I think we just go for it. We'll wait for our vassal to get down here to help with this fight, just so it's a little bit easier for us. But then I think we're just going to annex here, and we're going to go. We're going to fight a coalition war immediately. I think we have the capabilities to win this. I think we have the capabilities to win this. Can you please go in first? There we go. That way he takes the brunt of the damage. Oh, never mind. We were faster. <laughs> that doesn't matter. We got him anyways. Yep, get that stack wipe there before they're rebels. Cool. Alrighty. Well, let's do the peace deal. And let's do this coalition war, I guess. Alright, give me money and full annexation. Excellent supplies, cool. And give me money and full annexation here as well. So I am a little worried that uh, now I'm not going to have a, a claim here. And this coalition is going to fire super fast. Let's stay in this war a little bit longer. Even if it hurts us. Like we have a lot of war exhaustion right now. Uh, we can repay a loan. Nah, we'll just extend it. I have a feeling we're going to need that money. I have a feeling we're going to need that money. No coalition so far. Go speed 5 here while we wait for this. Uh, yeah, we can start to court up though. And our colony is fully done, which is pretty sweet. And first to kneel can be completed. So, many have deemed us invaders and conquerors, but those in Koram Koramutran saw us for what we are, a force of stability seeking to bring peace to these lands. It was they alone who knelt before Lascaris, and they alone who have shared in the rewards, and their city has since known prosperity. We shall teach their leaders and principles of the principles of civilization, and the victories that follow shall show the Tekendi the benefits of aligning with us. Kinism becomes the new state religion, they get a permanent claim on this state, and they gain three development. We gain a core on their capital. And this is if they have feudalism here and they like us. Let me go ahead and click that. So now we need to go to war with these guys again. But we have a pretty long truce with them, I think, because of the uh, humiliate. 61. Yeah, that's bad. That's a really long truce for us to have. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. He's allied to Lauren Curl. We'll fight him soon enough. We'll fight him soon enough. A little ridiculous. A little ridiculous of an alliance there, but it's fine. It's fine. Move up here, grab them. We are taking so much war exhaustion for this. So much war exhaustion. But I would like this claim so I can keep going to war. I desire more war. More war, I say. Get a claim there. And go back. Beautiful. And let's declare this one. Now we will... Well, first of all, let's move in. And then we'll peace out. Of this war. For all of that. 483 admin points. Because guess what? If there's no one alive, no one can coalition me. It's as simple as that. Yep, go ahead and core that all up. Even though it's expensive. Uh, let's go find his troops and fight them. Since we have attack advantage. We are now a great power. Beautiful. Alright. Stack wipe these 7k. And we will send our mercs up to their capital. We'll spread all of you out to a couple of areas. And we will go to speed 5. Local fortification expert. Yes, I will gladly take that defensiveness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's go loot. Yeah, man, I really wish we annexed these guys now. Uh, and how much is this going to cost? 203. This is going to put us overextended. Uh, I got to admit, not the biggest fan of that idea. Overextended in 1454 doesn't sound like a great thing, but we have to get this war exhaustion ticking down, so I guess you'll simply die. We could release him as a vassal, but I think we're going to have enough vassals. We'll just core it up. 
All right. Well, it is 1554. We have 114% over Sejin. Uh, and we're doing great. We're doing great. Go ahead and build a spy network on you and rival Lauren Carr. Uh, I don't know if there's enough people left to form a coalition. I don't think there is. Because all these guys are vassals. Oh. Never mind. No, they are. What the heck? Why is it not showing them as vassals on this screen? Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Oh, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. All right. Well, yeah, they have all these guys as vassals. So the only people that are in this area that hate us are Lauren Carr, uh, Emmerkend, and Nagar Vecchi. And they all have truces with them. So there's nothing they can do. Now, hopefully, these guys ally together. That would be the best case scenario. Uh, that is kind of wishful thinking, though, for that to happen. Now, even though we can't do a coalition war, there is still a chance that uh, these guys will attack me straight up. Which is obviously a, a possible. Ooh, yes. I will get rid of that corruption. Honestly, we just want to take the X2 officials. Like, I could debase for 136, though. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We pay off our debt. We can take bigger loans now. If we need to. Officers are deserting. That's fine. Widespread opposition. That's fine. 1454 gaming. Uh, core, all of that. We need to get back here. Deal with these peasants. Then run back across to here. Get that worked out. Get all this cored up. And we core all this, and then we go for the next wars. You know, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll take tech 5 here, and we will upgrade to the Kionai Phalanx, which is one defensive shot pip, two defensive morale pips. Forsaking the shield with, lo with longer pikes, the Kionai Phalanx made for messy work in battle against each other. But against the tribes of Metbahar, they were vastly successful. Okay. Good to know. Uh, I have not been colonizing. I have not been colonizing, and I should be doing that. Must keep colonizing here. All right. Hopefully, our vassal will come unseat this stuff for us while we deal with the actual rebel problem itself. Here we go. Do a couple thousand men that we would like to uh, hopefully regain back. Beautiful. Right, let's get that unseized, that unseized, all of it unseized. They did not unseize this stuff. Very rude, very rude. Not their job, sure, but still very rude. Uh, do I need to stab up? No, I don't. Two years, and we're going to take this. How old is our guy? It's 56. Okay. Oh, no, we just have to core things up. Oh, we're good. Awesome. All right, we have established a foothold in Taken, and we must ensure we cannot be pushed back out again in one fell swoop. They might consider us a short-term threat, but we shall show them we mean to stay. 20% national tax, 20% manpower recovery speed for 25 years, and if we are still alive, and we are, we gain one stability. So that brings us back up to zero. It's pretty sweet. Uh, let's start rooting out corruption a little bit more than that. Uh, we will reduce our war exhaustion one more time, just because I do feel like that is something we need to do. The Divilo points are not as important as us being able to go for our next conquests. Which, against the Warlords, we need to... Oh, boy. We need to deal with you. And historical friend. And Dayon as a historical friend. And M. Gremos as a historical friend. We get an alliance. Dayon declares independence happens. Dayon will declare independence. And Mion and M. Gross will join the war. If M... Agrimos has allied Dion's overlord. They shall still join the war, but any other support Dion may have shall not. Man, I don't even know what that means, but okay. Uh, let's build a temple and a marketplace in our capital. That I do understand. That's very easy for my tiny brain to understand. Build building. Got it. I got it. Easy. Easy, easy, easy. If that unseized, we can revoke crown land here. Uh, we do need to do two points of development, though. Which should be renaissance worthy. I, I would hope at this point it's renaissance worthy. Yeah. 
Uh, not that we can afford to develop it or anything, but if we we have the capability to, hypothetically speaking, in a hypothetical world, we could do that. Uh, you want me to own this? Yeah, how about no? Not right now. What if I tell you not right now? Maybe another time? All right, this, this, yeah, this is where my rebels are going to show up. This is, I'm not converting right now because we have a mission that's going to make it easier and cheaper for us to convert. Though I think I do still have a, yeah, this. Get out of here. Get out of here. We don't need missionary strength around here. Not right now. All right, so our truce is going to be up in 1458. That is two years away. We are pretty close, I think, to getting all of this cored up. Well, we're getting there. But we're no longer overextended, so that's nice. And once we do with these rebels, we can start to drill once again. Which will be good, which will be good. Actually, these might not even spawn. We'll see, but we're close to our governing capacity. I'd say it's a pretty good start for not knowing what I'm doing. I did not look into this mission tree at all. I didn't want to, I didn't want to know anything about it. But I know that it's good, and I've already enjoyed this. was a very fun, very, very fun first episode. Uh, and then we'll see what we do with Larencar here. Maybe we rush Tech 6 and we fight him. That might just be the play. Might just be the play. Rush Tech 6. We can even maybe focus and just start eating away at Lauren Carr's vassals. Maybe in our mission tree there's a way to do it. I'll look in the mission tree now to see what's up. But I think that is going to do it for the first episode. This is the first episode, so I'd like to ask you to please like and subscribe. It does help out with getting more people to see the videos. I hate asking. I really do. It's cringe. I know. But it really does help, so I would appreciate it. Uh, if you don't know, I also stream live pretty much every day on Twitch. You can find a link to that down below in the description, as well as a link to the Discord channel if you want to go ahead and join that. Uh, these videos will be released every single day except for Fridays uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. They're usually going to be about a half hour long, but I like to go a little bit longer for the first episodes to really make sure that we can sink our teeth into it and know what we are getting ourselves into. And I think we are getting ourselves into a lot of conquests, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.